Hi everybody, my name's Jack, one of the practitioners at Pinnacle Spine and Sports. Today we're going to be taking you through a short and effective warm-up for your next round of golf. As most golfers will be aware, the golf swing is executed by four major regions of the body. The hip and lower limb, the lower back, the mid-back and the shoulders. The four exercises we're going to complete in this warm-up are reflective of that. The hip hinge is a vital component of our golf swing, mainly at a dress. It allows us to deload your spine through your golf swing. A hip hinge simply means that we execute our bend through the hips rather than through the spine. Now a hip hinge is performed by bringing the pelvis backwards. Think about tucking your belt buckle into your spine and we simply bend at the hip and at the knee. If we feel that we're struggling to control a hip hinge, we can use a golf club running down your back, making sure that the golf club stays tucked to your belt for the entire bend. If we bend poorly through our lower back, we will see the golf club leave our body. If we feel that we can control a hip hinge, we will go into the hinge and follow through into half a squat. This is really important for our mobility in our hips later in the day. The second exercise focuses on our lower back, but also flexibility of the full spine. It's called a lumbar roll down. We want to begin in a position with our arms above our head and head slightly tilted towards the sky. What we will then proceed to do is drop chin to chest, start bending through our mid back, bending through the lower spine and allowing the hands to fall forward until they touch the legs. For some of us, this may be a comfortable position to finish. If you are feeling that our flexibility allows us to go beyond this, feel free to push further forward towards the toes. The return is slow to a neutral position, bringing the arms back up and head looking up to the sky. Our third exercise involves our thoracic spine or mid-back. This forms the coil of our swing in both the backswing, downswing and follow through. It's a very, very important exercise. This can be done against a wall for support if we need either side, but it also can be done at the tee box. Let's do it without the wall for support. We begin with our hands outstretched in front of us at 90 degrees. We're going to test left rotation of our spine. Our right hand does not move from its original position, nor does our feet. All of the rotation should be felt through our shoulders and our mid back. We simply open the book to the left hand side and allow our torso to rotate with the left arm. We can go as far as comfortably possible. We would like to see this four o'clock position of the left arm. To complete the exercise, we return back to neutral using your mid back. What we do not want to see is any swaying of our torso or any movement of that right arm. For the opposite side, we simply do the same sequence just with the other arm, maintaining the left arm where we are, our stance, and opening the right arm using the torso. With a wall, this can be pushed all the way to 180 degrees with support, again provided that the torso does not move and the feet remain anchored. Our fourth and last exercise involving the shoulders is called a wall angel. We want to allow our shoulders to get into full external rotation. We come up to 90 degrees with the arms, then we bring the elbows back 90 degrees to make a stop sign. This is part one of the exercise. We can do this against a wall. If you're unable to reach 90 degrees, focus on coming back as far as you comfortably can. If we're able to reach 90 degrees, the second part of our exercise is sliding the arms up the wall, further opening the shoulder into external rotation. The last part of our warm up is where we put all of our exercises together and embed them into our swing. Our brain's proven to learn things in terms of desired functions, how to pick a ball up or how to swing a golf club. So it's important that we put it through its routine before we jump on the first tee. If you remember our first exercise, our hip hinge to address a ball is the first component of this exercise. The second thing that we're going to do is use a club. I've got a six iron here, anything shorter than that probably won't work. Woods are probably your best go. 
The club wants to come behind, shaft at the base of the neck. Now that we're into our hip hinge with our back straight, what we want to be doing is working through, doesn't matter if you're left and right handed, we're working each way into as much rotation as we're comfortable. We're staying in that plane of twisting. We do not want to see any shift either side of the pelvis. Once again, into our hip hinge with a straight spine, rotation only. The last part of our warm up is your practice swing. We've gone through the component exercises, we've put them together into a hip hinge and rotation. Now it's your turn to execute your own swing before you jump on the first tee.